programming of these devices and the actual language. So we'll do, I'll briefly cover that and I'll show you guys some good resources on that and then you guys will probably come with some questions, I'll answer them next time. But for today, I'll go over what we did last time and also how to get input. Um, because that will be important for today, to play with stuff. Um, so today, what I think you guys, what I think a good, a good thing for you guys to try out today would be, you have an LED, you have two LEDs, and you can actually, that last pin that's connected to that LED, can stay connected to the LED, but you can do whatever you want with that pin, like the go over the group of it. So you can actually have that, that LED be kind of like an output. Because you can't see voltage, but you can see the LED. That's a very nice thing. Um, Sorry? Okay. So everyone remember this handout? Yeah. Old buddy from last week. Um, remember this diagram? You guys probably want to pull this up. So, uh, I've noticed about the Arduino language and their, some of the things they did, their design decisions, if you will. Um, the language is Java-ish like, also C-ish like. It's kind of a familiar mashup of every single object-oriented language that's too popular, other than Python. And so you'll sort of see things and you'll be like, oh, I know how to do this. And then, surprise, it's slightly different. Um, it's not as bad as MATLAB. This is a good thing. MATLAB is not very good. Uh, so one of the things they did is they remapped all the pins because they thought people don't know, don't uh, aren't used to this convention of like pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And also, the for some reason, we want to give them different names. Um, so now you, the blue ones out here, blue ones, uh, that's the name of the pin, and that's like your Arduino pin map. Right? So when you say pin 5, you actually need this pin, not this pin. When you say pin you know, 4, you actually need this pin, and not this pin. And this is in some part because some of the things on the Arduino are taken up by um, hardware. So the chip that converts serial to USB, that takes a couple pins. Um, there are some other things that are sort of taken up, right? You have your power and your ground. Those take up more pins. So when they had the output of the Arduino put into like these little headers, have you guys seen an Arduino? Maybe? This is like a, a smaller version? Yeah, like that. You see how the, there are like the little headers around the sides, the female headers? Um, they're, they're all in a row, so I guess it, they decided to be confusing to call it something like 1, 7, you know, 1, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 28, 27, right? So they sort of have this weird pin mapping. It's a little funky on our chips because we don't have this like board that they're on, but we have to live with it. Um, so that's the first important note. So you guys might want to pull this up. The second thing is how how do I code Arduino things? So the first thing you have is void setup, which is just a little um, it's a function that's run at the beginning of the program to tell the chip things like what pins are output, what pins are input. Um, are you initializing any connections? Don't worry about that now. Are you like starting any sort of like background processes or anything like that? Mostly we'll use it for input and output. So right here we have pin mode, which sets the mode of the pin. So you can imagine there's output and input. There's a secret third hidden state that we'll talk more about some other time. Um, which is like a disconnected high impedance mode state. Um, I'll also teach you guys how to turn on uh, pull-up resistors now. Um, so this one is an output pin, and basically, so a void loop is whatever your, like the meat of your program is, and so you have things like digital write, which you use for digital pins, so that's on or off. You may have noticed that some of these pins are called analog pins, 
And some of you guys did an analog write, uh, used an analog write program last week. Analog write uh, basically lets you do PWM. Uh, it has 255 uh, like spaces. So it's 2 to whatever equals 256. It's that many bits fit. Um, I think it's possible like 8. 5? 8. 8. Okay. So they're like between 0 and 5, there are 256 uh, like discrete like settings and it's basically PWM. It's really useful if you want to like dim an LED or make a motor go faster or slower. It's less useful if you want to move a servo because those require like specific pulses. Um, we'll talk more about servos maybe slowly. So we have digital write, delay. Delay just makes the chip waste cycles until um, you, you know, until that time delay is up, and then you have another write. So what this does, this is called delay. It sets up pin 6 to be an output, and then it says write pin high, wait uh, one second, that's in milliseconds, the delay function. And then do the right low. And then wait. Then go back to the top and turn it back on. Simple program, right? We can easily modify this field of pin 5. We would just say pin load 5 output. And we can change this to analog, right? Instead of high, we give it a value between 225 and 0. And so maybe we'll say like, 100, and then over here we'll make it uh, 250, I don't know. We'll, we'll be using pin 5 now, right? So we'll go ahead and verify. Everything right, seems good. We'll uh, move this LED over to analog 5. So we plugged it in, go ahead and press this button to start the bootloader, upload. Yeah, so I get the, you know, HRV warning. Maybe I said something wrong. You have to do it anyway. Uh, it should not have compiled it. You said analog right is a 225 maximum? Maybe a 255. It's 0 to 255, which is really 1 to 256. Maybe I have the wrong pin there. Can you, can you push the button before you? I may also be forgetting something. I haven't done this super recently. I'll take a look at this. I'll fix it uh, shortly. <coughs> but so that's how you uh, write pins. Actually, it's a, it's a really good resource are the examples. So I remember so Arduino, the way Arduino actually does this, you can use any pin for analog out because it does it, it basically bit bangs it, so there's just something in there that sort of flips these things every now and then, every so many seconds. And that's why you have like this weird 8-bit PWM. Um, so these are analog inputs. We want to use a digital pin. So we'll go ahead and make this. This for digital mind. So 
So now this LED should sort of fade, which I'm guessing it's doing. I'm just going to plug in. So it's slowly fading. This is good. Don't use analog input specialty pins for this, possibly. Um, but that's all, that's all fine and great. Right? And we're only doing output so far. So let's do an input example. myself. But try and avoid namespace clashes. Don't initialize too many variables because these things do have limited memory. Um, and your program could actually be too big to fit onto the chip. So then, you know, down here they do something with sensor value. So they delay for the amount of the sensor value. So it looks like this blinks a light and as you turn the potentiometer it will change how fast it works, which is kind of cool. I'll, does anyone, this remind anyone of anything? Secret knowledge, first day, blinking LED disaster. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of a fancy way to do it with, you know, the microcontroller and whatnot. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, curly brackets at the end of the beginning. Void loop just means it doesn't return a type. That's kind of a C thing. Uh, C++ thing. I don't know if Java has it. I think it does. So it's Java-ish. Looks kind of familiar. Uh, most guys should just pick it up pretty easily. Or the Arduino website has a lot of good information about all these functions. So instead of doing like doc, you know, doc plot, you can just go on their website and look out analog for um, But if you guys have problems programming, let me know. We can do more of this, but. I think you guys have been through enough sort of like if statement tutorials and like map laby type things where you have functions to understand this. <coughs> um, when we get to some stuff later, I'll do more details about this. Um, like when we do some of the USB stuff and some Python things sort of come into this. Yes, so parts. <coughs> What is 76 divided by 2? 38. Okay, yes. That's the number of people that signed up for this. So everyone gets two of these. Um, and you guys already have LEDs. You should keep your LEDs. You should leave them in that little bag, which handily came with your uh, breadboard. Try not to lose them. There are more in the EC stock room. I have like five or six or ten left. So we'll try not to use. We'll use these first, but then you guys can get more. I'm trying to lose them though, because if everyone loses like five or ten LEDs, it sort of starts to add up. Uh, 
pass these around. 